Hey, what's up out there? Coming at you from Southern Ontario, and what this is, is episode 2 of the Mystery Character Game. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to roll you the rule video so you guys can understand what's going on here. So, here we go. Okay, so how this game works is we will pick suggestions out of a hat, and each hat is going to have something different. For instance, one hat will have the gender of the character. Maybe it's a male, maybe it's a female. The next hat will be the characteristics of the character. It could be an animal, maybe it's an alien, or even a robot, or maybe it's human. The next hat will be what role it has. Maybe it's in the army. Maybe this character is a pilot. Maybe this character is a business person. Who knows? The mystery is what makes it fun. Alright, now let's pull from our hats. Okay, so first hat is the uh, gender hat. Rock, paper, scissors, who goes first? Okay, so I get to go first. I got a female. I got a male. Okay, so that's for the gender hat. Now the next hat will be... What species it is. Could be an animal, could be a human, or it could be neither of them. So, let's see what I get. Okay, so, I got a human. <laughs> I got a human also. Okay. Okay, now last hat. Last hat is its occupation or characteristics. So, um, I gotta go first again, I guess. I got a futuristic agent. <laughs> Extreme sports athlete. Okay, we got a human, but at least we got, like, you know, something rather uh, interesting for our, um, characteristics and all that stuff. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to mix all three of those things and we're gonna incorporate all those into our drawing here. All right, let's try to make something fun out of these. Okay, so the smart thing to do first is to look up some references, so that's what I'm gonna do. And again, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> a futuristic agent is something we don't see a lot, so I think that using reference will benefit me a lot. Unlike my brother here, he's doing a uh, extreme sports athlete. So, you know, we see that from time to time, so I think he'll have an easier time without it. Okay, so, so far in my references, I can see a lot of tactical and futuristic weaponry and stuff like that. So, I may go with something like that. Okay, it's finally time for me to begin. Now, what I got going on in my head is Tony Hawk and Paul White because they're the only guys I know. Actually, that's not true. I know a couple of other skateboarders, but that's it. Now, I used to play a lot of Tony Hawk as a kid on for video games, and there's a lot of extreme skateboarding stuff on that with exaggerated jumps. There's one game where you actually fly through the Hollywood sign. I believe you fly out of the O. If you go through a cave, you fly out of the O, and you can do all these crazy tricks. It was nuts. Playing the Tony Hawk games is a big part of my childhood, and it's too bad that the latest one didn't do so hot. When I think of Futuristic Agent, the first thing that comes to mind is um, Judge Dredd. The 2011 movie was real, real good. I recommend it a lot. But for some reason, apparently it didn't do so hot in like the theaters or whatever, but it's a really good movie. I think this time I'm gonna try doing a little less stylized, like last episode. I think this time I'm gonna do something a little more realistic. And it's taking more of an effort because, of course, it's a human and um, it's also a female. And I find for females, I have a little bit more of a hard time with. I guess it's because I drew males a lot more growing up, especially because I was a big fan of um, Batman and a lot of these DC and Marvel characters that were males and um, I guess that's why I have a lot of practice drawing males. Also, um, I also have a large history of drawing professional wrestlers, so male anatomy is something I'm a little more used to. 
but I'm actually quite excited that I'm drawing a female right now. Getting that practice in, I guess. Any of you guys seen Suicide Squad yet? I personally liked it a lot. A lot of people give it hate for some reason. Um, I really don't think it deserves all that hate, to be honest. Um, there is a couple things that, you know, don't really make that much sense, but, you know, I think it's kind of forgivable. I lost myself in it, basically, is what I'm trying to say, and it's too bad that some people didn't. Something that I'm trying to keep in mind is that I want this character to not just look female, but feel female, if you get what I mean. Um, I guess in terms of like stance and um, personality, what her body language is, we'll see how this turns out. Now I gotta get into like the personality of a uh, ex extreme sports athlete with like um, being an adrenaline junkie and loving stunts and all that stuff, so I gotta like think about it, you know what I mean? Also something a little different for me that I didn't do the first time around in our first episode is I'm gonna give my character an item. So I may have another go at looking for references for um, futuristic props. We would do a cracker break, but we're kind of out of crackers. Sometimes for certain hand gestures, I like to turn my drawing upside down and do it that way just because it's easier. Fishies are kind of like crackers. You guys see this? Stuck together. Maybe it's a sign. For what? I have no idea, but it's a sign. And you just ate the sign. It was a symbol of hope, of unity, for all fish. And you ate it. <laughs> so for my design, I'm putting the gun strap on the leg instead of the waist. I think it just looks cooler and it's closer to the hand, I think, in its natural position for a fast draw. I'm not sure, but you know, that's what I'm doing. Quite often when we get um, secret agents, stuff like that, they usually look all proper and like nicely done up and stuff. I guess they're just so pro that no matter what they go through, they still look pretty good. So I'm not hesitating to make mine look decently nice. But something I am going to do is have her hair tied up because I think that's just practical when, you know, you're doing the secret agent stuff. You don't want your hair to get into your face or get caught in anything. Or maybe if you're in combat, someone's going to grab your hair and that's just not fun. So tied up hair is what I'm going to do. So originally I was going to give my character a mask because I figured if she is a secret agent she might want her identity concealed, but we get people like James Bond and the Mission Impossible dude and they never wear a mask because that's just how they roll. And maybe that's how my character is. You know, she probably feels like no matter what occasion she'll feel like she can take care of herself. So I guess that's what my character is going to be like. Can't wait to show it to you guys and see what I got going on here. I already pretty much forgot what I looked up, so I'm looking up reference again. Let's see here. Some of the stuff that I'm getting on Google Images has nothing to do with what I searched up. That's pretty typical. I want my character to look stealthy but tactical at the same time, so maybe a little bit armorful but with a hint of ninja. 
If I don't stop myself, I just might eat all these crackers. Something I'm not a fan of is morphed muscles in a suit. I just think it's kind of silly. And it's something that we see a lot in live action superhero movies because I guess if we look at the cartoon designs of the live action superheroes, you basically have their muscles just bulging out of their costumes, almost as if like their uniform was just painted on. I think it would be a little more realistic if the muscles were not morphed into the costume. I think that's just kind of a thing that people wouldn't do, but more of a tactical look because they want the most protection that they can get if they're going to be fighting crime. But who can forget the bat nipples? Ben Affleck in the new Batman movie has a new costume. It's pretty much the same, but how the muscles look and how they were morphed looks a little more armor looking, I guess, and I'm pleased with that. I'm more of a fan of if at least the muscles that are morphed onto the suit looks kind of like it's armor, like muscles but like a shell, if you get what I mean. That's okay with me, but when it's just straight up muscle, it's just like... You could literally throw in a skinny guy in that and then there's just muscles on the suit, you know what I mean? Costumes that I'm really pleased with is um, the costumes in the Arkham games. Um, those look really, really nice. I like the Batman Arkham Origins costume. That that costume is just perfect. See, Batman used to have his tidy whities outside of his costume, where it was black. For that, they found a way around it to keep that shape around um, his pelvis area, where it's black, but it's just a separation from his armor to some of the material that's holding it together, and it's just worked beautifully, and it had kind of like armor-esque, uh, um, covering on his uh, torso and it just worked perfectly like that's my ideal Batman costume something that I like about the costumes is that it's not just spandex but actually looks like um, a suit made for fighting but they kept the same design I raise my hand and I surrender Alright, pencils down, let's show what we got. So, seeing as I went last time, I gotta let my brother go first. Alright, so here's my human extreme sports athlete, and he's a male. Alright, so I gave him longer hair to give him more of that edge, like rock star look. And uh, usually skaters like to wear their hair long. Um, I gave him a tooth necklace. Cause that's kind of an extreme type of thing, like swimming with sharks or surfing with sharks type of, th type of thing. I put flames all over his uh, his uh, clothes, like his shirt and his helmet. It's kind of like your typical daredevil extreme type of thing, where you you know jump through uh, hoops of fire type of thing, which kind of brings up um, the whole extreme factor. I made him uh, shredding through snow, so I gave him snowboard, so he's uh, pulling off a sweet trick, and I put his tongue out, like if he's enjoying himself, and he's a little bit, a little bit of a loose cannon, and um, I put stars all over his helmet, just for fun, and um, on the edge of his board, I put all kinds of stickers, like if he just likes to collect stickers, and put it on his board for personality. I also gave him a shirt instead of a coat, because I feel like he's just that cool, he wouldn't wear a coat, he'd just wear some type of sweater or something like that. Um, I made his uh, helmet um, with the straps off just to give him like a uh, kind of a carefree type of guy. And yeah, that's all I have to say for him. So this is my extreme sports athlete man, human. Okay, for my design, I had a human female who was a futuristic agent. So for me, I decided to give her a tactical outfit. A little bit armored, but I made sure that it looked like she can move around in her outfit and it's not all stiff and stuff like that. I gave her this futuristic weapon, which kind of looks like a club, but I drew it so it looks like it has multiple uses. Got a little taser at the top there. It's also um, a glow stick, and I guess you can beat people with it. Isn't that fun? I decided to make her costume a little bit busy because... I feel like it's a little more interesting that way and a little more futuristic looking. I gave her kind of tight-fitting clothes because I feel like 
for movement and stuff like that maybe it'd be more practical and something that we see a lot so i gave her a utility belt because maybe if she's investigating something she can put stuff in her pockets and stuff and i gave her a logo to maybe represent um who she's affiliated with maybe if um somebody sees her and will be like okay i see that you're affiliated with this people so i shouldn't mess with you or okay you're a part of the good guys something like that I gave her one of those futuristic glasses things, just in case she needs to, I don't know, look through something or detect something, something like that, face recognition maybe even, after all it is the future, according to what I got from the hat. You know, I can imagine that with all the futuristic technology and stuff like that, that probably crime would be a little more difficult to deal with, if that kind of stuff gets into the wrong hands, so this lady here has to be really prepared for that kind of stuff. Not gonna lie, her club is based off of a lightsaber. And to finish this off, I purposely made her not too tall because I feel like a lot of female characters are made super, super tall, especially the kind that are supposed to fight for themselves. So I didn't make her very, very tall. In fact, I kind of made her short. All in all, I designed her so that she looks like she's ready to kick some futuristic tail. Know what I'm saying? Hey, you know what, man? Maybe your character will be an unlockable character in a future SSX game. Sean White, you better watch out, because this guy is coming for you. Oh, nice bat. Wonder if she hits any home runs. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all we have for this episode. Just a couple of guys who love to make all kinds of art. If you want to see some of that art, please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have all kinds of stuff from music to sketches to little shorts to little stories. And feel free to give our characters a name and backstory. Who is my character and why did she decide to join the Secret Service? What inspired her and who is she fighting against? And maybe even who is this dude? And who is he competing against and why is he competing or is he competing at all? So if you'd like to invent a little story for our characters, why not leave it in the comments below so we can check it out. Alright, peace and love, till next time. <laughs>